Hello everyone, this is CG Novo 992 and today we are back with another brand new video. Today's video we're here to discuss the actual football. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's right, football actually exists in Scotland, it's not just all media and referees. Well obviously it could have been no referees about football so that joke doesn't really matter but I tried and that's sort of the main thing. Today we're going to be doing a sort of team news prediction of the upcoming match between Hamill and Andy Glasgow Rangers but before we actually get there I just want to say thank you so much for all the support in yesterday's video, 99.9% .9 of it was completely positive and it was a really, really great discussion and also interesting to see how you actually saw the overall way that Scottish football was kind of going. I actually really enjoyed that video. I spent about an hour and a half reading through all the comments. <laughs> Some of them were pretty funny and hilarious, but other ones were pretty more serious. And it was honestly just really, really great to see that the nation have got to this sort of place that we can actually discuss more serious topics and actually go forward with an actual video as well. So thank you so much for all that. But we're going to dive into Hamilton versus Rangers, so sit back, take a seat, get your refreshment ready, because it's prediction time. Three, two, one. Hamilton versus Rangers, 12.15 kickoff on Sunday afternoon, early afternoon. And obviously this is going to be a different Hamilton that maybe Rangers faced earlier on in the season when they were sort of five at the back, kind of negative football style. They've tried to change that, and that's what Brian Rice, obviously the new Hamilton manager, is slowly trying to fix. They're obviously trying to get more goals in their team to save them in the overall position in the league. Now, it's not really going to plan, but at least he's willing to actually change the overall setup. So I'm very, very curious to see if they actually revert back to their five at the back formation. That's their old and negative style formation, sitting deep and just hope that they manage to get a draw. Or if they'll actually venture forward and play four at the back against the Glasgow Rangers. Also shout out to Brian Rice by the way, talking up Scotty Arfield who obviously was one of the ones that gave him a chance earlier on in his career. Speaking up, talking about he could potentially be the key man. Actually saying positive stuff about Rangers players. That's just so weird and unusual, isn't it? Now if you've seen the press conference already between Gerard Defoe and obviously the media that was on the official Rangers YouTube channel, like 50% of it was talking about the Steve Clark situation but we've already addressed that and probably about 30 other percent of it was about the artificial pitch sort of aimed at Defoe and how's he finding it, obviously playing in England, what's it like coming up here and playing on plastic and artificial pitches. And I really, really love the way that Jermaine Defoe actually answered the question. If you've not seen it, he basically said it's still a park with two goals at either end and you have to put the ball in at the back of the net. And I really, really rate that. However, the last time that we played on plastic was obviously at Rugby Park versus Kamarnock and it just didn't go well. We looked very, very, very poor. Then we actually played them on grass and spanked the little bottoms. That was weird. Let's never do that again. But unfortunately, we can't skip over the fact that we did drop points versus St. Johnson. And if you look at the two games where we went goalless, we had no Alfredo Morelos. And this is the sad part of the video. I'm sure most of you already know this, but just in case you don't, Alfredo Morelos will be missing in this game of football as he serves his last game of suspension. That's right. Possible five at the back, negative style team, sitting in deep, artificial pitches, near Alfredo Morelos. Frustrating Sunday on the cards, lads. Looking forward to it. <laughs> All joking in that aside, I'm actually really curious to see how Steven Gerrard actually tries to tackle our sort of forward struggles when Alfredo Morelos isn't in the team. Now, obviously, we may just go back to our normal formation that we actually play, where we just take Alfredo Morelos out, put the phone like we did versus Kamarnock and St. Johnson. It didn't quite work, but it might roll the dice to see if it actually kicks on now that he's given sort of each of the players a kick up their own arse and had some choice words with them. This could be a test to see if they're actually willing to step up and play for the actual badge. Or do you think this will be the time that he reverts back to his two up top formation and try and get the best out of Jermaine Defoe? Because I think that to get the true best of Jermaine Defoe, you need to do what Spurs done all the years ago. Put someone tall, someone strong that can hold the ball up, like a Peter Crouch, etc. when he was at Spurs. Someone to knock the balls down so Jermaine Defoe can run in behind and get into the actual box. I said this when we obviously signed Jermaine Defoe. He is not an Alfredo Morelos at all. He won't hold the ball up. He won't run into the channels and work things. He is the ultimate poacher. You need to put the balls in the box. You need to actually create chances and he will absolutely bury them. But we need the creative players to really step up, especially when Alfredo Morelos isn't in the team who's going to sort of make his own chances. We need Daniel Cadez to play as if Morelos is playing and we really need a strong performance out of Ryan Kent getting out the wing and whipping balls in first time and rather than sort of stepping back, taking an extra touch. We need to get these balls in the box and we need to really feed Jermaine Defoe, especially if he's playing up front on his own. Now I know the result's been buried so deep you can't even find it but the 5-0 thrashing of Kamara was obviously a massive massive boost and the players should be extremely confident but I certainly don't want them walking in this game feeling overconfident because we saw what can happen. The St Johnson result certainly shows that. They all wait for someone else to step up and no one 
actually does. So the first question I actually want to ask you guys is what formation would you actually play versus Hamilton? Do we try the sort of tried and tested formation, just take Morelos out and put Defoe there, the sort of 4 3 free tactic? Do we try that again, see if they can step up? Or do we actually change it and try and play more to our strengths of our forwards and also give Kyle Lavery an actual chance for once? And when I really, really think about it, I'm seeing pros and cons for both style of formation. So it's going to be a hard one. There's no right or wrong answer. So I'd be very interested to see what you are thinking down in the comments. If you're asking me directly, I genuinely believe that Gerard will still play the one up top and will go with Jermaine Defoe just taking Morello. So I think that's the way they'll play and Gerard will give the players that he trusts a chance to get the job done with obviously the players that failed against St. Johnson. Benching an injury list, obviously we have Alfredo Morelos, who we've already spoken about, will be serving his last game of suspension. We've got a return though, some good news, we've got Alan McGregor returning to the number one role in goals for the Glasgow Rangers, so it's great to see Shagger back in the mix. However, I do feel kind of bad for Fods because I think every time he played, he actually put in a really, really good performance. What's he called? Three games, three clean sheets or something like that. It's a tremendous turnaround for Fods, and he's certainly played well, but it's just, I still think Alan McGregor's a better overall goalkeeper I'm sure there's going to be a couple of discussions whether Fods deserve to be dropped keeping clean sheets but I just think if you compare them both you're always, always going to side with Alan McGregor I know that's quite harsh on Fods but you've got to go with your best team your best goalkeeper and that for me still is Alan McGregor Moving on to Grezda now Grezda's back training with the boys he obviously is keeping up to on his own Twitter account it wasn't actually mentioned at all during the Rangers press conference but Grezda's actually keeping us up to date and he is back training with the boys so that's great to see another attacking option if we need it off the bench now, I know this isn't technically an injury, however, I thought it would be worth mentioning that Matt Poster is near on full-time fitness, so we could potentially see him on the bench and maybe even get a couple of minutes for the Rangers making his debut on Sunday. Moving on, it obviously leaves us with the last two. We've got Graham Dorrance, who again occurred a couple of weeks setback, so it's going to be a long time again before we see Graham Dorrance, which is obviously quite devastating news for not only us, but obviously for the man himself. Every time he seems to get close, he seems to re-injure himself, and he just goes all the way back to step one. But my fingers are still crossed for you, Graham. Hopefully you're back and you play for Rangers before the end of this season. However, the other player that we need to speak about is Jamie Murphy. Now, there was a lot of rumours going on in the week. I don't know which website actually published it, but it's apparently that Jamie Murphy was a about six weeks ahead of schedule and he's closing in on a return to the first team which instantly got me excited but I was like wait Gerard said three days ago that he was still weeks away anyway Gerard sort of cleared up this rumour and says it was a false spread rumour Jamie Murphy will still if anything make the last two or three games this season if he's able to actually make that he's still progressing well but the stories about him recovering mysteriously six weeks ahead of schedule was actually just made up lies. But anyway, that's us all done and dusty for the team news, the press recap, the suspension list and obviously the injury list as well. All that's left is for me and thee to get their predictions out there. So while you're firing your prediction down in the comments section below, I'm going to give you my prediction right now and I'm expecting a very, very frustrating game. I think we're going to need to be at our best and really take our actual chances in the overall game. But I'm still confident in the boys to do it. You know me, I always back the Rangers and how as important this game is, I think that will be strictly highlighted to every single one of the players that are pretty much playing for the futures because dare they play as bad as St. Johnson? Well, any of them ever freaking play again? I certainly don't think so. Anyway, my prediction will be Rangers 2, Hamilton no, that's right, I'm going to go with a clean sheet. And my goal scorers, I believe Jermaine Defoe, will grab an actual double. That's right, double for Jermaine Defoe. Now, it's time to jump over and get a little sponsor break. You thought I was going to say Twitter, didn't you? Didn't you? Grab your refreshments, everyone. Three, two, one, sponsor break. <laughs> But now we've reached the favourite part of every single video for me personally, it's reading your weird and wonderful tweets direct from the people on Twitter. 943 votes, thank you so much for getting involved with still 6 minutes remaining as well. 3% votes for the draw, 4% votes for Hamilton, come on now, come on. And 92% of the people votes for Rangers, 92 992. I have no idea why I've done that. Anyway, let's read directly from the people. Roy O'Neill says, 3-0 Rangers, goals from Defoe, Kent and Big Connor Golton. I think he's due a goal. True Blues, Cambridge writes in, no controversy today is our prediction. And I think Tav will score a penalty 1-0 to the famous hashtag let's go. Hashtag shout out True Blues. Cambridge. Billy Casey's 5-1 to Rangers, Defoe 2, Warrell 1, Jack 1 and Tavnir with a penalty. Hamilton to get a pen plus 4 pens turned down. Okay. Peter actually writes in, I've got a team for tomorrow, CJ, and I'm just going to actually read out the team. It is our cheeky 4-4-2. 
Pulls at right back, Golton, Worrell, McGregor, Barisic. And in the midfield, he's got Daniel Cadiz, Jack and Glenn Kamara, Ryan Kent and Lafferty and Jermaine Defoe up front. You know what? I'd actually be alright with that. I'd substitute Polster because I obviously I rate to have a lot, but I rate that team, mate. Good shout, good shout. Thank you for taking the time to actually send that one in as well. Craig I.A. Rick, Rick, Rickard writes in Rangers 2-0. Why am I messing up so much? Who actually knows? It's probably the, the sugarless iron brew. Uh, Chrissy RFC says 2-0 to the famous Does Morelos miss this match? Yes he does Chris Frank Donaldson says The dressing room will still be ringing from the gaffers Dressing down from last Saturday's uh, performance So I predict a riot And Tav must be clinging on to the, king, <laughs> the captaincy By his fingertips And the actual last two or three that will actually read it Come from Cal He says 3-0 Matt Polster to get a debut double With Defoe to score the third Liam writes in 5-0 to the famous Defoe to score two Tav penalty Kent and a Kyle Lafferty goal. And the last one we'll actually read out to keep it fair. Bang! Right there. Man, it's a long one. Great. <laughs> Craig1872 says, I thought I was finished. Then I seen someone say Morelos can start. So I thought I was finished. But then also seen someone say Lafferty should start. So then I thought he was still banned. And it confused the fuck out of me. He could get dropped because it's a game we should win. And that's the end of today's video. You've heard from the people on Twitter. You've heard from myself. If you haven't done so already, you know what to do by now in the comment section below to get your thoughts and opinions out there. And if you don't mind hitting that like button as well to help others find the channel, that makes it come up on YouTube search engines and stuff like that. That'd be greatly, greatly appreciated as well. Shout out to the 51 Strong on the Patreons account. I've been Cedric Overnight too. Thank you so much for watching and bye.